Welcome to the Tourmaline video tutorial. Tourmaline is an Amplicon sequence processing workflow that uses Chime 2 and SnakeMake to enable rapid analysis of Amplicon or metabarcoding data. On my screen, you can see on the left is a terminal window where we can enter and run commands for the workflow. And on the right is a web browser that's open to github.com slash aomlomics slash tourmaline. And this is the Tourmaline GitHub repository. So in this window, you can see at the top, we have the directories and files of the repository, and then a preview of the readme.markdown file. And so here we have an image showing you the steps of, of the workflow, install, set up, run, and then the input and output files. It then walks you through why you might want to use Tourmaline, what Chime 2 options it supports, and how you get started. Now, you can click on the wiki, and that will take you to a detailed uh, guide to using Tourmaline. And this is helpful especially if you want to dig in deeper and run your own data through the workflow. But if you just want to do the tutorial to start, you can use the quick start guide, which is here. Now, the main steps of Tourmaline are the denoise rule, the taxonomy rule, the diversity rule, and then the report rule. And these rules are like commands, and there we'll see how they're run in a minute. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is install Tourmaline. And we have two options for this. Option one is the native installation, where we install Tourmaline natively on a Mac or Linux system by downloading and installing Chime 2 and the various dependencies that Tourmaline uses. And that's all described in detail here. Option two is the Docker container. And this is very simple because all we have to do is download Docker, either Docker Desktop or the Docker app for Linux, and then download the Docker image and run it. So this is what we're going to do today. So first we make sure Docker is open. And then we go to the preferences, clicking on this gear here. This, this takes us to the preferences. And we click on, uh, we're following these, these instructions here. So we're going to click on resources and make sure that our memory is at least eight gigabytes. Here we have 32 gigabytes of memory, so we have more than enough memory, um, but eight would be a, a good number to be able to run the tutorial and probably any other data set you want to run through Tourmaline. So we can close that, and now we download the Docker image from Docker Hub. So we're going to type docker pull aoml omics slash tourmaline, and this is going to download the tourmaline Docker container from Docker Hub. And that's very quick for me because I've downloaded this before. It may take a few minutes for you. So now that it's downloaded, we can now run the container. And we're going to type docker run with this dash v flag, which will mount our home directory to slash data, which is the top level um, of the docker container. And then we just specify the name of the container that we just downloaded. So now we have downloaded the Docker container and we've mounted our home directory. So any uh, directories or files that we create from this, this container will be in our home directory when we're done. Now that we have the Docker container downloaded and running, we can proceed to the next step, which is setup. And in this step, we're going to clone the GitHub repository and make some changes to the files to match our local uh, local environment. So first we copy and paste this git clone command. And anytime we run uh, a new, do a new version of Tourmaline or do a new run of Tourmaline, we're going to want to clone a fresh copy of the repository. So this should just take a few seconds to download. All right. And so continuing here with the instructions, the first thing we want to do is go into this folder 01-imported. Um, so we're going to type cd tourmaline 01-imported. And we need to download the reference sequences and reference taxonomy. So we're going to copy those next two lines and paste them into our container um, and hit enter. And while that's running, we're going to 
copy the second one. And this is, um, these are the Chime 2 formatted Silva reference databases for 16S. Okay, so we've downloaded those two. And now we want to uh, create symbolic links. Um, this makes it easy to use the default file names that come with the configuration file with Tourmaline. So we're going to create symbolic links there. And so now you can see we've downloaded those two um, .qza files. Those are the, the Chime 2 formatted 16S database files. And then we've created symbolic links to those. Now this next step here is, is not necessary with the container with the tutorial. If you're doing an, if you've used a native installation and you're running this on your Mac or Linux system, you will want to change the path names of the manifest files. Um, in our case, we can go ahead and look at, at those and we can see that um, by default, the, the path names here, so this is the, the sample ID and then a comma, and then the path to the fastq file for the forward and reverse, and then the word forward or reverse, depending on which one it is. So these are already pointing to slash data, slash tourmaline, slash zero, zero data. So if we go back, I typed Q to exit out of that less um, page. If we um, were already here in slash data, slash tourmaline, slash zero, zero, dash data, and we can look at the contents of the FASTQ folder, we can see that we already have those files there. So the path, uh, the path name when we're using the container is, is, is already correct. It's if you're using the native installation that you will need to change the, um, the paths to your, your absolute path on your computer, which would be say on a Mac would be slash users, slash your username, slash tourmaline or wherever the tourmaline is located. So now it says we can go to run snake make. So now we are ready to run SnakeMake. And we want to make sure we're in the slash data slash tourmaline directory if we're in the container. If we're, no matter where we are, we want to make sure we're in the top level tourmaline directory. So if we were to type ls, we would see that we have the snake file here. We have the config file, config.yaml. And let's take a quick look at the config.yaml file. This is the configuration file. And this is going to contain all of the parameters that, that we can change when we run Tourmaline. For the tutorial, we don't need to change hardly anything here. So, for example, the metadata file is located in 00-data. The manifest files are, are also there. If we were using um, pre-imported data, those would be in 01-imported. Uh, same as if we were using the FNA and TSV files for the reference database, those would be in 00 data. But we're using the already imported um, in Chime 2 QZA format reference database files that we just downloaded and created symbolic links to. Then there's also parameters for data2 paired end, data2 single end, and deblur uh, single end. There's uh, parameters for taxonomic classification, for multiple sequence alignment, for outlier detection, for subsampling or rarefaction. And here we're going to use a very low number, 500, because we have a downsampled data set that um, hasn't, doesn't have many sequences in it. And we're going to use, um, also we, we have parameters here for beta group significance. Uh, for the report theme, we can change the look and feel of the report. And then uh, there's some parameters here for filtering as well as just instructions. If there if there's a hash sign next to the line, that means it's a comment. So in some cases, there's just comments here that you can use to um, to help guide you. So this is a great a great resource, um, the configuration file beyond just beyond just setting the parameters. And so um, and then finally, after all these different filtering steps, so filtering by feature ID or by taxonomy or by length or by abundance and prevalence, 
you can set the number of threads for individual steps. So we're going to leave that as is, um, but you'll definitely want to make sure you, you, you look through that whole configuration file um, if you're running SnakeMake on your own data, if you're running Tourmaline on your own data. So we can go ahead and run the denoise command. So we're going to copy that command from, um, from over here in our readme and there's um, 15 different rules that are going to be run. And now that the denoise step is, is done, we can list the contents of the tourmaline directory. And so we now have, let's just go ahead and look at what was in data. We had, we had the, the FASTQ files, the manifest files, the metadata, then the sequences we can filter. Those are just dummy sequence IDs for now. This is all what came with the with tourmaline. And in the imported directory, we have those two uh, Silva reference sequence files, or, or reference database files, the sequences in the taxonomy, and the links we made to them. If we type ls-l, we can see that there's links. And then we also have some new output. We have the FASTQ counts, the FASTQ counts uh, statistics, the um, imported sequence file and the uh, FASTQ summary visualization. We also have a new folder, um, the output for data to paired and unfiltered. And within that, we have the, the table that was generated both in QZA format and biome format, as well as a visualization. We have a table summary of features and samples, which is similar kind of information to what's in this table visualization. We also have um, various information about the representative sequences, including the representative sequences themselves, as well as some t statistics from data too. So now we can go ahead and run taxonomy. All right, so the taxonomy is done. We can go ahead and look at the output there. So there's a few new uh, folders. Here we now have a taxonomy, well, just one new folder. We now have a taxonomy folder, and that contains the taxonomy uh, QZA file, the Chime2 archive, the visualization file, as well as a tab delimited version. And we have the taxa bar plot visualization. We'll look at all these uh, when we're finished. And so now we can run uh, diversity. All right, so the diversity rule is done. Let's go ahead and look at the output now. Um, we now have three more folders. We have the alignment and tree folder, 02 alignment tree. We have the 03 alpha diversity, and we have 04 beta diversity. So we can go ahead and look at those. In the alignment and tree folder, we have um, the aligned representative sequences and different statistics about those. We have outliers. We have more um, representative sequence information, uh, various properties, um, outliers, unassigned sequences, the rooted tree and unrooted tree, including the visualization of the rooted tree. 
we have in the alpha diversity folder, um, alpha rarefaction, and then group significance and a vector for evenness, faiths, uh, phylogenetic diversity, observed features, and Shannon diversity, as well as a rarefied table. And then in the beta diversity folder, we have um, for each of four different metrics, we have the distance matrix, the emperor uh, plot, the group significance results, and the PCOA results for um, Bray Curtis, Jacquard, unweighted unifrac, and weighted unifrac. And then finally, we can run the report rule. And this is a, a usually a quick rule that is going to generate the uh, markdown and HTML report that summarizes all the output in one place. We've now got all the output here. This is a the same sort of thing we just saw, but now it's in my, my finder. Um, and it's a little hard to see because of the, the screen size, but what we can do is open up some of these folders, you know, and start to look at the results. So uh, for example, we can look at the taxonomy bar plot. So I can go to view, dot chime to dot org drag and drop the taxonomy bar plot and I can now make the bar width a little wider and now you can see the different taxonomic groups at this is at level one so we can see we have some unassigned and some eukarya in there for the most part they're bacteria which is good and then we can tunnel down at different taxonomic levels we can mouse over and see which groups are there and so already we're starting to get some insight into the into the data. You can see our sample names down here. The the 0.22 is is 0.22 micron filter, and the uh, 0.50 is actually 5.0 micron. Um, we can see that in the metadata. And so we can click on the Chime Two View link, and we're going to leave, and then we can look at another file. So let's look at. Let's look at alpha diversity. We can look at the number of observed uh, features, group significance. All these .qzv files are great to look at in the Chime 2 viewer. So here we can, we can um, view the alpha diversity. Let's say we want to look at filter size. So we can see that we have higher number of observed features in the 5 micron size versus the 0.22 micron and we have some some statistics down here to reflect that and then let's just take one more example there's lots of things we can look at let's look at beta diversity let's look at unweighted unifrac emperor is the one we want here and we can zoom out a little bit we can color by color by filter size again. If we color by filter size, we can see we have the 0.2 micron on the right here and the five micron fractions or filter size, size fraction on the left. And it looks like axis one is, is the biggest differentiator there. Secondly, we can also color by region. And here we have open water is now in red and Western boundary is in blue. And we can see those are pretty well differentiated along this axis too here. So this is just a quick way of looking at the results and and there's a lot you can do with this. So finally we want to see the report. So that would be in this file 03-reports and we can open this up. Let's open this with Chrome and here's our report. So there's instructions for each different file, but we see here where there's a, a, metadata, a metadata summary with for each column name in the metadata the most common value and the count that that value is found. It just to give you a, a, a kind of a top level view of the metadata. Scrolling down, we have information about the FASTQ sequences, sequences per sample, and we have links to all these output files, including the markdown file in this case, or most helpful is the .qzv file. So here's the visualization of the 
fast queue sequences. So if we click on that, it's going to download to our um, to our downloads folder, folder. We can show in Finder. So we've now got a second copy of this file, which also exists in the file uh, in the in the directory 01-imported. But you know we can have an, another copy here in our downloads and, and delete it later. So if we wanted to look at that again, we go to view.chime2.org, drag that to to there, and now we have histograms about the frequency of of sequences uh, per sample. We have so here we have a thousand sequences per sample in each. We have an interactive quality plot that shows the uh, drop off in sequence quality from position zero to position 300. So this is a, all accessible from the report, as well as you know you can click on these files directly wherever they are, but sometimes it's nice just to see the report. The only uh, thing to be careful with the report is that it does have relative links. So you can't just give someone this HTML file. You need to give them the entire tourmaline directory, probably zip it or tar it, you know, and then share that whole zip archive. They can unzip it and then when they open up the report file, the links will still be will still work. All right. So this these are symbolic links or these are relative links rather. So we also have information about representative sequences, information about the observation table, some summary statistics, and again, links to the various files where these statistics can be found, taxonomy diversity, alpha diversity, beta diversity, links to all the files. And then we have a, a copy of the config file that was used. So this is helpful. You have a record here of all the configuration parameters that were used. And so that that's tourmaline. And yeah, we hope it's useful for, for people and look forward to hearing how it works for you.